So today we will learn about piracy. Does anyone know what is piracy? Have you heard of the term piracy? Well, so piracy is an international crime that is committed on international waters or the high seas. Piracy would, you know, refer to, you know, when, when we say there was an act of piracy, that means we mean there is probable robbery, robbery on the high sea, or there is some, um, you know, robbery probably at the point of the gun, or maybe there is criminal intim intimidation at gunpoint, and then robbery, probably even kidnapping, which might include even murder and so on. Now, going through your slides, piracy is a maritime crime that endangers maritime security and, of course, the welfare of the vessels that, is, that are sailing on the high seas. Piracy simply means robbery on the high seas in simple terms. And in legal parlance, piracy can include activities such as robbery, kidnapping, and criminal intimidation that is threatening. Criminal intimidation means threatening, and threatening a person amounts to a criminal offense. It is, you know, a criminal act. So criminal intimidation on board with a robbery at gunpoint. So the area be beyond the territorial seas of 12 nautical miles is considered as a high seas. You know that, and we learned it during the last class, that the, that the, that the seas, uh, you know, Beyond the territorial seas, twelve not in, uh, beyond the twelve nautical miles of uh, the territorial seas is considered as the high seas. Now, when the robbery is committed within the territorial waters, it would be adjudicated as per the domestic laws of the coastal state. Why? Because the jurisdiction over the territorial waters belongs to the coastal state. That is, the coastal state has got or exercises sovereignty over the territorial waters. So thereby, what is piracy? Piracy is a maritime crime that is committed on the high seas, that is beyond the 12 nautical miles of the territorial sea, and that which comes within the ambit or the purview of international law. A pirate may be prosecuted under international laws as or as per the nation to which the pirate belongs or is a national. So a pirate is one who commits the offense of piracy. So the question comes, under which law should he be prosecuted? Or he or she, whatever. Under which law should a pirate be prosecuted? Whether he should be prosecuted, uh, you know, according to the laws that are you know, um, uh, that are prevalent in the, you know, in any coastal state that is close to the high seas, say, just after the coastal state comes the territorial water, say there is a, a, a very close coastal state there. So should he be prosecuted under the laws of the coastal state? Or should be, he be prosecuted under the international laws? So the answer for that is, of course, since it is an international crime, it is considered as a crime under international law. A pirate should be prosecuted under international laws or as per the laws of the nation to which he belongs or, uh, or, or to the nationality, I mean, the nationality that he you know has or he is a national of which particular country of, of a particular country so he needs to be or he can be prosecuted under that particular uh, you know domestic laws of that particular country to which of which he is a national so therefore pirate may be prosecuted under international laws or as per the laws of the nation to which the pirate belongs or is a national part seven of the united nation convention on the law of the sea 1982 deals with the offense of piracy under articles 100 to 108 and 110. So this is very important for you to, in case a question comes for the examination, you will have to mention this article, Article 101, which defines piracy as consisting of the following acts, that is any illegal act of violence or detention or any act of depredation committed for private ends by the crew or the passengers of a private ship or a private aircraft and directed on the high seas against another ship or aircraft or against persons or property on board such ship or aircraft or against a ship or aircraft or persons or property in a place outside the jurisdiction of any state 
or any act of voluntary participation in the operation of a ship or of an aircraft with knowledge of facts making it a pirate ship or aircraft that means all the facts point out to uh, you know the fact that a particular ship or an aircraft is a pirate ship or a pirate aircraft that it, that is they are trying to involve themselves in some illegal activity which may include you know detaining any other vessel that is moving on the high seas or they apprehend some kind of violence that may be you know posed by the pirate uh, ship or an aircraft or any act of inciting or intentionally facilitating an act that is described in subparagraphs or subclauses A or B, that is, again, an illegal act of violence or detention or any act of depredation or any voluntary participation in operation of a ship or an aircraft with knowledge of facts making it a pirate ship or an aircraft. Now, Article 100 deals with the duty to cooperate in the repression of privacy. Article 100 of UNCLOS, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1982. It deals specifically with the duty to cooperate in the repression of piracy. So it states that all states should cooperate. That is, all countries, all nations must cooperate to the fullest possible extent, the best extent in the repression of piracy on the high seas or in any other place outside the jurisdiction of any state. For the Article 102, it refers to piracy by a warship, government ship, or government aircraft whose crew has mutinied. So it specifically therefore states that the acts of piracy as defined in Article 101 is committed by a warship, government ship, or government aircraft whose crew has mutinied and taken control of a ship or aircraft are assimilated or considered as acts committed by a private ship or aircraft. Now, Article 103 or 103 defines a pirate ship or aircraft. They say that what is a pirate ship or what can come within the ambit of definition of a pirate ship or aircraft. A ship or aircraft is considered as a pirate ship or a pirate aircraft if it is intended by the persons in dominant control to be used for the purpose of committing one of the acts that is referred to Article 101. So what are those acts that are specifically mentioned in subclause A and B? Which one? So here, any illegal act or violence or detention or an act of depredation which is committed for private ends or any act of violation, participation, operation of a ship or an aircraft with knowledge of, you know, facts making it a pirate ship or aircraft ship. So, so it says that a ship or an aircraft is considered as a pirate ship or aircraft if it is intended by the person in dominant control to be used for the purpose of committing one of the acts that is referred to in Article 101 or 101. So the same applies if the ship or aircraft has been used to commit any such act, so long as it remains under the control of the persons uh, guilty of that act. So Article 104, it talks about retention or loss of nationality of a pirate ship or aircraft that has to be determined by law. So they say that generally, Generally speaking, a ship or an aircraft may retain its nationality, even if it is a pirate ship or aircraft. However, Article 104 clearly states that the, that the retention or loss of nationality is determined by the law of the state from which such nationality was derived. Next, Article 105, it deals with seizure of a private or oh, oh, sorry, of a pirate ship or aircraft. So it states that on the high seas or any other place outside the jurisdiction of any state, every state may seize a pirate ship or aircraft or a ship or aircraft taken by piracy and under the control of pirates, and then arrest the persons and seize the property on board. The courts of the state which carried out the seizure may decide upon the penalties to be imposed and may also determine the action to be taken with regard to the ships aircraft or property subject to the rights of third parties acting in good faith. Now, Article 106, it refers to the liability for seizure without adequate ground. So in case there is seizure of a ship or an aircraft and suspicion of pri piracy, in case, you know, uh, there are particular international authorities, they might seize a particular ship or aircraft suspecting piracy. And there has been, you know, no adequate grounds, no reasonable grounds. So the state or the country making the seizure shall be liable to the state, the nationality of which is possessed by the ship or aircraft, any loss or damage caused by such seizure. Are you understanding me? What if there is a mistaken seizure? What if 
you know, the international authorities, they wrongfully seize a ship suspecting it to be a pirate vessel or a vessel that is engaged in piracy. So then who bears the brunt? The state that makes a seizure under a mistaken belief that the, the particular vessel is a pirate vessel. So that particular state is liable to the state of the nationality of that particular vessel. Which vessel? Which was mistakenly considered as a pirate vessel. So Article 107 further deals with ships and aircraft which are entitled to seize on account of piracy. Now, a seizure on account of piracy may be carried out not only by warships or military aircraft or also by other ships or aircraft which is clearly marked and identifiable as government service or authorized to that effect. Article 108, it stipulates the cooperation of states in case of illicit traffic of narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances. So all countries, all states should cooperate in the suppression of illicit traffic in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances which are engaged in by ships on the high seas contrary to international laws and international conventions. Now, any state which has reasonable grounds for believing that a ship flying its flag is engaged in illicit traffic of narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances may request the cooperation of other states to suppress such traffic. That means they must, uh, you know, divert their efforts or, you know, pool in their efforts for fighting against illicit traffic of narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances. Under 110, the right of visit is not permitted in case of ships that are engaged in piracy. So therefore, what is piracy? In general terms, we talk about piracy as being robbery on the high seas. Now, you know what is the definition of high seas. High seas is beyond the 12 nautical miles of territorial seas. That is considered as high seas. Now, when robbery is committed on the high seas or there is some kind of an act that uh, could be called as an act of depredation or an act of violence or detention, which is committed for private purpose, a private end, or with a personal agenda or a private agenda by a private aircraft or a private ship is considered as have committed piracy. So it could be even, you know, exercising um, threat or criminal intimidation, which may be on board with a robbery at gunpoint or kidnapping and so on. So therefore, piracy is a maritime crime that endangers maritime security and the welfare of the ships or vessels that are sailing on the high seas. And every nation and every country should make efforts to, you know, repress uh, piracy and uh, to fight against piracy and to, you know, um, uh, adjudicate, you know, piracy in a proper manner and above all, you know, devise rules or regulation or rather I would say legislate legislations to the extent that, you know, they would fight against piracy. So now what happens in case a vessel is seized under a mistaken belief that it is a pirate vessel. So in case it is proved beyond all reasonable doubt that a particular vessel is not engaged in any piracy or is not a pirate vessel, then the state that makes the seizure or the country that makes a seizure shall be liable to the state, uh, state to which this particular ship belongs or, uh, I mean, or which you know, carries the flag or which particular state, which, whichever state it can be. So the state making the seizure shall be liable to the state, the nationality of which is possessed by the ship or aircraft, for any loss or damage that is caused by the seizure. So next we will move on to um, chapter six. Now chapter six is, you know, an exhaustive chapter.